welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to look at probability and combinatorics and how the things that we've learned about combinatorics like uh, combinations and permutations just might help us figure out some probabilities that um, could be considered rather important. For example, if you're a poker player, it might be pretty important for you to know what's the probability of getting a full house. And to make it pretty simple here, we're talking you're dealt five cards, and that's about it. There's no draws, there's no chance to trade in some cards. You're going to be dealt five cards, and what's the probability that you got yourself a full house? Now, for those of you who don't know poker hands, a full house means three of one kind, for example, three kings, and two of another kind, so you might have three kings and two jacks. Any, anything like that is considered a full house. It's a very good hand, by the way. Um, so how do we get this probability? Well, remember what probability is. What we want are the total outcomes on the bottom, and then the outcomes that we consider desirable or successful on the top. How many of these outcomes do we have that we would consider full houses? And how many hands are there possible when you're dealt five cards? So let's start with the bottom one. That's probably the more straightforward one. You have 52 cards. The order in which they're dealt doesn't matter. So these are combinations. And you want to be dealt five cards. So it's 52, choose five. That's all the different combinations of five cards when you have 52 different cards to choose from. So that's the total number of hands possible. Now, how many of those hands are going to be full houses? And what you have to do here is say, well, um, let's start and kind of work our way through it using a fundamental counting principle kind of approach. For example, for our three of a kind, we can choose that they're either twos or threes or fours or fives or sixes or sevens or eights or nines or tens or jacks, or queens, or kings, or aces. So you have 13 choices for what kind of three of a kind you, you want to have. So that would be 13 to choose from. Now, suppose we use, for example, um, kings. So um, that's one of the 13. And how many different ways are there to take the four kings in the deck and get dealt three of those? So what we're looking for there is how many ways can we be dealt um, three kings? So that's four, choose three. Okay. So the 13 says there's 13 different choices for the type of three of a kind. And here's how any, what, once you've selected your three of a kind, here's how any of those three cards can be dealt to you. So this is how we get our three of a kind. Then we got to think, well, once you've chosen your three of a kind, how many choices are there for the pair? Now, you only have 12 choices. The reason you only have 12 choices is you can't uh, include whatever you picked for your three of a kind. Okay, so if I take kings, for example, as my three of a kind, then kings are out of the running for the pair. I don't want any kings to be showing up in that pair, so I really only want to pick from all the rest of the suits, okay, or the, the levels, the rankings, I guess. And how do we get different combinations there? Like suppose we chose a pair of threes. Well, there would be four threes, and you want to choose two of them. That's how many different combinations there are. So this is going to be our probability. Now all we got to do is take our handy-dandy calculator and put all that stuff in it. And thank goodness all this stuff is built in, so I can just start crunching away here. So I want to go 13 times 4, and I go to choose 3, times 12, times 4, choose 2. Whoops, got the wrong thing showing up there. Hmm, 4... There we go, choose two. So I got all the top stuff put in there, and then I'm just going to go divide by 
52, choose 5. And there it is, probability of being dealt a full house right off the bat. Not looking too good here for you poker fans out there. We get 0 0.00144. And um, if you like, sometimes people like to change um, the probability, which is, of course, in decimal form, and they like to change that to a percentage. So that just means moving the decimal over a couple of spots. So you might prefer to see it written like this. 0.144%. Not a very good chance you're going to be dealt a full house right off the bat. So my advice to you is next time you're playing poker, you get dealt a full house right off the bat, boy, you got a pretty good hand. Okay, that's one of our examples here. Let's look at something else here where combinatorics can help us. And we're going to use a little concept here called the complement. And sometimes it's easier, as we saw with the birthday problem, sometimes it's easier not to work directly and calculate the probability of what something would be. But it's easier to say, well, I can figure out what it can't be. And that's what we call the complement. And that's a little bit easier sometimes to work out. Remember that this little rule applies if you have an event A, the probability of A plus the probability of what isn't A or the complement must add up to 1. And that's what makes things so useful to us here. So let's have a look at an example that might make use of this little rule. Uh, in this one, I want to find out, back to poker, the probability that at least one card is an ace. So at least one ace. So again, you're dealt uh, five cards. And we really would like to know what are the odds here, the probability that you're going to get at least one ace. Now that means you could get one ace, you could get two, maybe three, maybe four aces. Although I think that's probably very unlikely. But we're including all of that as successes. So in that case, it's, a, it's not going to, well, it's not impossible to work it out directly. You know, you have to figure out, well, well, how many combinations are there with one ace? How many combinations are there with two aces? And you add these all up. Um, but it's easier if you do the following. We'll just take the total probability, which is 100% or 1, and subtract the probability of no aces. Okay, now if you think about it, if you remove the probability of no aces, then what's left is you got to have one or two or three or four aces. So we're going to throw out the possibility of no aces or the complement of, um, of getting an ace or two or three or four. So here's what we want to do. One minus, and here we go again. Uh, we're dealt five cards, so out of 52, choose five. That's how many um, combinations there are, five cards. That's our grand total. And to get no aces means just think of aces not being in the running. We want no combinations that have aces in them. So we want to take all the other 48 cards and make combinations of five cards with these 48. Why 48? Because you have four aces in a deck, and we're saying no aces allowed. So that means the four are gone, so you're down to 48. So, back to our handy-dandy calculator. So we simply go 1 minus 48, choose 5, divided by 52, choose 5. So here we go. Let's see what we got here. Not too bad. 0 0.34. And we'll even throw in an extra decimal for you. So about 34%. Not too bad. So there's a pretty good chance you might get an ace. And of course, uh, that, that's not very uncommon if you play any poker. Um, pretty often you go, hey, i got an ace here. Now i got to figure out what I want to do with it. Um, Okay, let's have a look at uh, one more example. 
And let's get uh, get away from the card games here. Card games are good and all from a mathematical perspective, but uh, probably not uh, not all that good from a financial perspective, I guess. So, unless you're really good. Um, hmm. Yeah. Well, we won't get into that. Um, okay, let's look at the weather. Everybody always wants to fancy themselves a bit of a forecaster or a weatherman. So let's see if math might be able to help us here. Now, suppose you had some information. The probability that it was going to snow on any one day. So uh, we uh, phone up um, some weather bureau and they say, well, you know, probability is about 0.3 or 30% that we're going to have snow on any given day. Okay. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what might be the probability that we get at least one day of snow during the next four days? I mean, maybe you got four days off and you really want to go cross-country skiing and you're thinking, uh, should I be waxing up the skis? Because all I need is one good day of snow and I can be skiing. But if the probability isn't there, I won't bother waxing the skis. So let's have a look. At least one day of snow. Now that means we're including one day of snow, two days of snow, three days of snow, and if we're really happy, lucky, four days of snow. So that, again, you, you could work that out directly, but it's a whole lot easier if you just think of, well, what could I remove from this? And that would be... I would like to have um, the complement and subtract it from 1. So in other words, 1 minus the probability of 4 days no snow. Okay, that's going to be easier, and here's why. If you think of the tree diagram, let's go to day number 1. You might have snow, and you might have no snow. Now, once we have a snow, which is uh, probability is 0.3, that's success. That would be one of our, we would count that as one of our combinations of success. Now, no snow would be 0.7. That's the complement. So that's the first day. That's pretty easy. But then it starts splitting, of course, and you go to your second day. And you're going to have snow possibly, or you're going to have no snow, and you might have snow and no snow down here. So again, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Now, start looking at how many branches, even with just two days. Uh, we would call this a success. Snow followed by snow, that would be a success. Snow followed by no snow is a success. No snow followed by snow is a success. And the only one that isn't a success is no snow and no snow. Now, that's only two days. If I went into three days here, you can see you're going to have quite a few branches that are going to be successes. In fact, there's only one string here, and that's no, 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 which is not a success. Okay. So rather than to work out all these probabilities and then add them all up, which would be the direct method, I'm going to use the one take away the probability of no, 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 no. Four days of no snow. And that's really easy to do. I just go 1 minus 0.7 raised to the 4. Because there's four days here. Uh, so we're going to have 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7. So let's have a look whether we need to be waxing up the skis or, or maybe just watching a video or something. So 1 minus 0 0.7 to the 4. Let's have a look. 0.7 7599. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, you've got almost a 76% chance that you're going to get at least one day of snow. Uh, I'm not a betting kind of guy, but if I was, I'd say you better wax up your skis. Looks like you're going to be going skiing. All right, that's how um, our knowledge of combinatorics. And uh, in this case, using a complement event uh, can be very helpful uh, to working out some probabilities and making some predictions with a little bit of a mathematical uh, support, a little bit of uh, 
strength to the argument that you need to go and wax up the skis. So, pretty good stuff. Anyway, that's where we're going to stop for today, and we'll catch you later.